If you're at all like me, you've probably struggled to get the right kind of sound out of your personal computer. Now, I know for me, I've spent tons of money on different speakers, different headsets, all kinds of stuff, trying to get the sound the way I want it. Now, it can be a really frustrating process. But today on Tech Talk, we're going to look at a simple, free Windows application that can help drastically improve the sound that comes out of your computer and can help you get the sound exactly the way you want it for the kind of things you like to do on your PC. Now, this is my favorite kind of solution. It's cheap, it's simple, it's totally effective, and it'll help you get crisper, cleaner, deeper, more immersive sound, regardless of what kind of equipment you have. So sit tight, because we're going to be talking about that right now, right here on Tech Talk. So as tech-minded people, when we think of improving our computer sound, often the first thing we think about is going out and buying a new hardware gadget. Because let's face it, who doesn't like to go shopping for new tech stuff? So maybe your first knee-jerk reaction is, I gotta go out and buy new speakers, I gotta go get a new headset. And it's true that higher quality hardware will improve the sound from your computer, but it's not the only factor. A factor that often gets overlooked is modifying the signal that's coming from your computer to that hardware. Because computers typically put out a pretty flat sound profile, and the best speakers in the world can only do so much with that. So the two sides of improving the sound from your computer are, yes, think about getting better hardware if you need that, but the first thing you should think about is improving the signal going to whatever hardware it is that you currently own. And that's what we're looking at today. We're going to look at an application. It's a free open source application for Windows. Unfortunately, it's not for Linux. And it's called FX Sound. Now, what FX Sound does is it's a software equalizer that runs on your computer and it modifies the signal going to your speakers, going to your headset to give you exactly the sound that you want. So let's go about looking at FX Sound. And before we dive right into it, I know sometimes when stuff is free, people say, oh, well, if it's free, then, you know, you're the product, right? They're concerned about ads, they're concerned about your data being taken, etc. But to put your mind at ease, FX Sound, it's been around for at least, I think it's more than 20 years now in different names. But the developers of it, they used to sell it. It used to be a for-profit product. And after it had been out for a long time, they decided to make it open source. They released the code. It's available on their website. Anybody can see it. Anybody can modify it and use it. So it is a genuine open source product. The nice part about it is, too, you're not going to some website to download it, a website you're not familiar of that you might be, or not familiar with that you might be kind of concerned about. You can actually get it right from the Microsoft Store. Now, if you do try out FX Sound, you really, really like it, you're making good use of it, I do suggest you make a donation. The developers ask for donations on the website if you're finding it useful, and so it's always a nice thing to do to show your appreciation. So let's get right into it. Let's go now to the Microsoft Store, and I'm using this on a Windows 10 PC, but it's Windows 10, Windows 11, doesn't matter, works for both. In the search bar, we're just going to type in FX Sound, and it's this application right here. And it's a very small application. This thing is only, it's less than 50 megabytes, and so it doesn't take up a lot of room in your hard drive, and it doesn't use a lot of system resources. So let's hit the Install button. That's just going to take a couple of seconds to install. And when it does, what you'll see is a little notification down here in the bottom right of my screen, just above the system tray, that will tell us that FX, down, FX Sound is now running. And there it is. So you can see it says the output is my speakers that are attached to my computer, and it's now running, and I have the FX Sound logo down here in the bottom right of my screen in my tray. So, now that we've got it installed, let's take a look at how FX Sound works. So the first thing I want to show you is how it works inside of Windows, because it's important to understand. So if we go down to our sound settings, we right click on the little speaker icon and go open sound settings, we see that FX Sound is now a device in Windows. So what that means is that once FX Sound is running, it is a sound device in Windows and it becomes the default sound device. Now, FX Sound will, once it's installed, it will start up every time you start your computer, so it's always running in the background, which is naturally what you want, because then it's always modifying your sound signal to the way you like it. So now that we understand that, let's go right into the application. We're just going to open up our system tray to the FX Sound icon. We click on it, and there we go. That is the FX Sound application. And so there's a few things here that uh, help you to modify the sound exactly the way you want it. It's a very simple application to understand. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of work our way around the application. I'm going to show you what each thing does. So the first thing, this is my Tautronic soundbar. I have already gone into FX Sound and made a couple of custom modifications or a couple of profiles. So this profile, Tautronic soundbar, that's the soundbar that I'm using with this computer. I've set up a custom profile that I think makes the soundbar sound the best it possibly can. So this is where all your profiles are. The top ones are all the ones that come with the software. The ones below the line are custom ones that you can set yourself, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. The next box over is your output device. So remember I told you that FX Sound becomes an output device within Windows? Well, if FX Sound is running, this is where you change the actual hardware that you're outputting to. So we see if we drag this down, I've got my speakers here, I've got another high definition audio device and I've got my monitor. This monitor has speakers on it so I can choose to put output or choose to output sound to the monitor instead of my soundbar. So if you want to change where things are, are being sent to, where the sound is coming from, maybe you use speakers and sometimes you use a headset, this is where you select what device you want the sound to go to. Now there is a setting, if we go down here to the bottom left and to settings, there's a setting that says automatically switch to newly connected output device. If you turn that on, every time you plug in a new output device, a new set of speakers, a new headset, FX sound will automatically direct the sound to that new device. Now, I personally don't like that because I find sometimes it selects devices that I don't want it to go to, especially monitors. I had a monitor with a bit of a sketchy HDMI cable so the connection would come and go. Uh, and so it was always selecting that monitor every time the, the connection kicked in again. So I prefer to keep that off for myself. I rather just choose my output device manually. I don't change that often, although I do use a headset from time to time. So that's how you go about doing that. The main part of FX sound, the part where you get to customize the sound that comes out of your device is located in this section here. Now there's a couple of preset sliders. Clarity helps to clarify the high notes, the cymbals, the higher tones in your sound. Ambience adds reverb. I'm not a huge fan of reverb. reverb. Reverb basically just sounds like echo. I found it does help in gaming though. It can really help flesh out the sound. I play a lot of the Hunter Call of the Wild. I do have a bit of reverb for that game. I find it works really well, but it is an option to give you a little bit of reverb to kind of fill out the sound if, if you like that sound. Surround sound is another one that's helpful for gaming. What it does is it separates your left and right channels. It provides a greater degree of separation. So if you're gaming and it's important for you to hear things, whether they're coming from the left or the right, that can be helpful in gaming as well. Depending on the way your speakers are set up, it can be helpful in other things uh, such as conference calls, uh, movies, even music. Dynamic boost is a boost to volume. If you've got lower powered USB speakers, like my Tautronic soundbar, is USB powered, it doesn't have a lot of wattage. The dynamic boost can actually help you get more sound, louder sound out of that device without having a whole lot of distortion. I've tried it on this soundbar, I've tried it on my Creative Pebble 2.0 speakers I have in my office, it works really, really well. And the last slider that we have here is bass boost, that helps to boost those bass notes that you hear in your music, in your movies, in your gaming. Uh, it, it's really effective and it's really, really helpful for getting more bass out. It works particularly well when you've got smaller, lower powered speakers that have a difficult time developing those bass notes. Now, of course, we have the sliders, which you can customize all the different frequencies or a lot of the different frequencies that you have in your sound. Down on the left side, these are your bass frequencies. To the right, you've got your high end, your trebles, and in the middle is all the mid range. So what I find really handy is to simply choose a preset that sounds best to you. So for me, I like the bass boost preset for, for my Tautronic soundbar. And then customize it as you see fit. Now, when I first started listening to music and other things with the bass boost preset, I found there was a, not enough high end. So all I did was I kind of adjusted the high end up a little bit to get myself a little more of those treble notes. And for me, that made a pretty big difference into the way things sound. Now, of course, once we've made changes to a preset like this, we're probably going to want to save that preset. And the nice thing is we can save presets, we can save sound profiles for a lot of different purposes. For instance, you might want to save one set of settings for your headset, a different set of settings for your speakers. 
You might want one profile for movies, a different one for music. So here's how you go about doing that. So now we've made some adjustments to this bass boost profile and you can see that it's been changed because there's a little asterisk beside the word bass boost. So we know we've changed that profile. So let's go down to the little hamburger icon. We'll go save new preset and we're gonna enter a name for it. And we'll just call that Graham Sound What. We hit enter and now we can see that that is our new preset. We're working with Graham Sound 1. If we want to change to a different preset, we just drag it down, go to TV. Now we've got a different preset sound profile. Now what if we go back to Graham 1 and we decide that we never really got that profile right. It needs a few changes. Maybe we just overdid it on the bass a little bit. Well, what we do is we go into that profile. We can drag down the bass sliders a little bit. We go back to our hamburger icon, and this time, instead of save new preset, we select overwrite existing preset. So we click on that, and now Graham Sound 1 has the new base settings. So that's how you go about saving presets, saving profiles, and you can make as many of these as you want just about. You can have, like I say, a whole bunch of different profiles for a bunch of different purposes, a bunch of different pieces of hardware that you listen to sound through. So what I'm going to do right now, let's go in, we're going to go to some music and what we're going to do is we're just going to listen to how big of a difference the sound bar or the fx sound application makes to my sound bar and the sound that comes out of it the nice thing about fx sound is you do have this big power button right here that basically you can turn the equalization on and off quickly so let's take a listen to this music it's just an instrumental but i think even through my wireless mic you're going to hear the difference and keep in mind it's coming from my sound bar into the mic out of your speakers so what you hear is going to be nowhere near as pronounced as what i do but i think you'll still get an idea of the huge difference that it makes when you have equalization on even this inexpensive speaker system so let's give that a try And now off. So that's a very, very small sample of the difference in sound quality you get when you use an equalizer application like FX Sound. Now, there are a couple of caveats around using an application like this that you probably need to know about when it comes to your speaker system. The first thing are there are limits to how far you can set these sliders. If you crank these, especially on the bass side, if you crank them all the way to the top, most speaker systems are gonna give you a whole lot of distortion and it's gonna sound like garbage. So you do need to apply adjustments to the extent that your speaker can handle them. That particularly applies to dynamic boost. If you're trying to push too much volume through a speaker set, you're gonna end up distorted. If you're trying to push too much bass through a speaker set, you're gonna end up distorted. So there are some limitations. The better quality of the speaker, the more adjustment you'll be able to make. But even for very inexpensive speakers, I found adding FX sound as a sound processing application makes an enormous difference into how they sound. And especially if you're like me, you're, you're a little bit fussy. Maybe you know you like more bass, maybe you like clear treble, maybe you don't like mid-range, whatever it is. Just the fact that you can adjust it to be exactly what you prefer, what sounds good to your ears, is a huge bonus. So that's one thing to be aware of, is that you're only going to be able to adjust things to the extent that your speaker can handle it. The other thing is when we look at the high and low end of the equalizer, you do have to be aware of the frequency response of your speakers. And I'll give you an example. When I first set my Creative Pebble uh, 2.0 speakers up in my office, this bass was down at 92 hertz. Now, I was sliding the slider up and down, and I couldn't notice a difference in the sound. I'm like, at 92 hertz, why am I not getting any difference out of, out of this speaker? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. So I went online and I looked at the Creative Pebble or I Googled the Creative Pebble 2.0 frequency response and it turns out the frequency response of those speakers is only 100 hertz to 17 kilohertz. 
So if your frequency response on your speaker is 100 hertz, you can understand if this is set at 92 hertz, it's not going to give you anything no matter how much you adjust the slider because the speaker can't produce that low a bass. It's a frequency that the speaker isn't able to actually output. So all I had to do was I took this little slider and I rolled it up to about 101 hertz because these aren't affecting just that frequency. It's, there's some bandwidth there. It goes across a few frequencies. I rolled it up to 101, 102, and when I started adjusting, now I could really clearly hear the difference. So if you're adjusting your equalizer and you're not hearing a difference out of your speaker, the uh, the lowest note, the furthest in the bass down on the left, the highest note on the right, it may simply be out of the uh, frequency range that your speaker is capable of working. So all you do if you're adjusting the bass and you're not hearing anything, you just bring this up. If you're adjusting the treble you're not hearing anything, you can just bring this down until you start to hear a difference and then you know you're within that frequency range. Or you can do what I do, search the speakers and the frequency response, and if it's a, a fairly common speaker, you're likely to find exactly what the frequency response is, or it'll be in the manual that came with that product. Now, in my use of this application, what I found it's been really good for is it's good really for just about anything you do on a computer. I found it good for Zoom conferences, I found it good for movies, I found it good for gaming, and I found it good for music. I mean, music is the obvious one. We all like to have our music sound exactly the way we like, with the right bass, the right treble, etc. But even for things like a Zoom conference call, if you've got this adjusted right, you can get so much clearer audio from a Zoom conference call because you can move that mid-range up bring down the bass and treble to get a little bit more clear voice. In gaming, it's been great. I do a lot of trucking simulators and I've always found an American truck simulator, simulator and Euro truck simulator, I get a lot of engine noise and not much road noise. Doesn't feel natural to me. When I started playing around with FX sound and I boosted up the bass notes in particular, I found I could get it so that the road noise came through much more clearly and the engine noise was a little more subdued, which to me is much more realistic from a truck sim. Same with playing the Hunter Call of the Wild, which is another game I like to play. With FX sound, I got it so that the, the stepping on leaves sounds so crisp, the, the gunshots have a nice reverberation that makes them sound very realistic, and it just really increased the immersion of that game. So this is an app for me, I use it on every single one of my computers. It has really, really made the sound to me that comes out of my machines way more enjoyable, way more immersive, and the fact that it's free, I really enjoy. And I wanna be clear, if you're, you know, an audio engineer or an audiophile and you really know a whole lot about, you know, the, the ideas and the concepts behind adjusting sound and working with sound, this is not an application for you. What this application is made for, it's made to be very, very simple for people like myself. I do not have really a whole lot of understanding of sound engineering, but the interface is so simple that I can quite quickly get sound to the way I like it. So it's really meant for average users, for people that don't have a ton of knowledge about this stuff, but just want an easy way to get better sound out of their speakers. Because it's free, you can go, you can download this, install it on your computer, start playing with it. There's no risk to you. If you decide you don't like it, you just uninstall it. Uh, so for me, this is just a fantastic app. It works really, really well. I highly recommend people trying it. Uh, and I think it's a really great solution. And what I would do is if you're not satisfied with the sound coming out of your computer, I would try this first before you start replacing hardware. Because you may find that this makes a big enough difference, and it can, it can make a huge difference. You may find this makes a big enough difference that you realize that, you know, my hardware is not that bad after all. So I know that was a pretty quick walkthrough of FX Sound, but I think it gives you enough information that you can get started. I do encourage you, because it's free and because it works so well, it's so effective, I encourage you to try it out, download it on your PC, play with it, see if it makes the sound better for you. Does it give you more immersion? Does it make your sound more enjoyable? Leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. Do you think this is a fantastic app or are you a little less jazzed about it than I am? Do you think there's another app out there that works better? If you do, I'd like to hear that too. I always enjoy reading your comments. Uh, I find it so helpful, and I'm sure there's a ton of other viewers that if you've got suggestions, they'll find that helpful too. Again, I'm Graham Hughes. I hope this was a helpful video for you. This is Tech Talk. I'm going to look forward to seeing you next time.